My boy, you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, ho, ho. yo, fam, we got. Look at it. We got the boy, Detroit's finest in the <laughs> building. This is good. What's up? Hey, What's Kurt. Good, my brother. <laughs> hey, bro. We are blessed, bro. Friday night lights. You know, we chilling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bitcoin's up. Yo, and the, this 90s, I got this 90s remix out, bro. They, they threw on some, we already got Pop, Biggie, Dre. We, we running, bro. It's a vibe. Right now. Yo, guys, show some love to Kurt Cobain in the chat box. If y'all guys are crypto, okay, if y'all guys are in the crypto, you're like the crypto's family, you know Kurt. Homage, bro. Homage. Much and love, my brother. Yeah. Much love, bro. You... Like I've been, I've been tapping in and watching what you're doing, and it's it's so impressive, bro. You 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 inspire me to do this Friday Night Lights because it's like it's 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 like Club Crypto, you know, coming on, having fun, and we want the people, we want you guys to to really grow. Like I, I, the the art of an educator, Kurt. You already know, bro. It's different. It's yeah. different, bro. We educate in a really to really put people on game, um, but bro, like. Talk, talk to me. So I was just showing them. Guys, by the way, if you're not on Kurt's sessions, Kurt's on at 9 o'clock tonight. It's a great time to get in there. But you got Kurt on Mondays for beginners. Wednesdays at 9. Wednesday is crazy because now you got myself, Nick Gomez, Anas, and Kurt back to back to back to back, which is wild. And uh, and then Friday nights too. Um, somebody said Sunday. Are you on on Sunday too? Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, you gotta go. To, you gotta go to live, and I'll pop up on the schedule. Oh, live I gotta put. You know what? We gotta get. Yo, Kurt. Let's tell Shane. To, mm -hmm. Let's tell Shane to put that session here. Yep. Let's tell. Yep. Yeah, we gotta tell. I'm gonna text Shane after. We tell him to put that session on here because most people just go to the first tab. So we want to make sure. But yep. uh, but bro, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, yeah, facts, facts. So. So what what are you thinking? Like, talk to me about what you're seeing right now with with Bitcoin, um, and we'll go into Ethereum, bro. We were both on the same page. I saw you call that Ethereum trade on Swipe Trades, bro. If, guys, I hope you have Swipe Trades. If you're new, <laughs> if you're new, don't be overwhelmed. You're gonna learn. But uh, but talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah, bro. So I mean, right now, like the climate has never been better for crypto, bro. Like I was doing some research the other day. Shout out to everybody who was on the Wednesday night call. I was breaking down how these corporations are coming into cryptocurrency right now and they're coming in fast. Like they're, they're not playing around. So like shout out to uh, Michael Saylor, right? First uh, publicly traded company to come in with micro strategy and move his balance sheet over into Bitcoin mm. right now. Not only is he doing that, he's done it right. It's already like pretty much hundred percent of his balance sheet is in Bitcoin. Now he's actually holding a symposium for other fortune 500 companies. And he's going to give them the blueprint to how he did it. Right. I walk everybody through the website, showed them the schedule is going to do it. So February the 3rd, we're going to have all these, you know, like top, you know, S&P 500 companies come in. He's going to coach them on how to move their balance sheet into Bitcoin. Not only that, on the 4th, he's going to have them walk through and meet with all the CEOs and CFOs of Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, Galaxy Digital, NYD, right, uh, Fidelity. They're all going to sit down and ink these deals so they can start actually putting that into work to get their balance sheet put into crypto. Bro, you know what's so crazy? You know, like, obviously, you know, you, you jump on my sessions and I appreciate that a lot. I, it's always good to see, see the homies showing love. And, you know, one of the biggest things that I've been trying to educate people on, you know, this morning I was on with a former CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And we were talking about some, some different stuff about, you know, designers, streetwear stuff that we're working on. But... You know, the conversation came up and, you know, she's like, look, I, I know you're you're educating on crypto and I work with an old school credit card company and I know that technology is going to be obsolete soon. Oh, wait, hold on. Listen to what's in the background real quick. <laughs> Same old pimp. But, um, but listen, you know, what's crazy is like, we were talking about that, and I feel like the masses have still yet to be properly educated. The old money, right? Old school money. Big, big CEOs, big companies, big CFOs have yet to be properly educated. And the supply is not, this isn't like unlimited supply with Bitcoin. 
So yeah. as these institutions and big companies and like massive, massive corporations start to acquire or move USD into the crypto markets, coin market cap is going well over a trillion number one but the but the scarcity of bitcoin is going to continue to grow yep yep and that's that's the big thing right now so we're seeing these big money movers come in and they're buying this stuff up in droves right now like there's a shortage of bitcoin on the exchanges not only that like listen it's ethereum play dude like i keep trying to tell people <laughs> ethereum right now is the sleeping giant like people talk bad about ethereum because they say oh you know bitcoin is going to be the king it's a scarcity about it it's 21 million there will be many more than 21 million and i love that about bitcoin but when you look at ethereum yeah it's always got a bad stigma attached to it because of the fact that yeah we're going to have this infinite amount of ethereum that can be printed out i get it i get it but now with this new protocol that they're releasing for ethereum it gives it a scarcity model now right it has a deflationary mechanism attached to it, right? I've been telling everybody to look this up. It's called EIP, Ethereum Improvement Proposal, EIP 1559. Right, when no. you look up EIP 1559, it literally is telling you throughout the blocks that they have, the fees for Ethereum will be capped per block. So it can't raise up. So if you've ever made any trades on Uniswap or did anything with DeFi so far or did anything with staking, you know the fees on Ethereum are absolutely ridiculous right now. Like that's one of the biggest draws from it is just you're going to spend a lot of money if you're working on Ethereum. Not only that, that the fees are going to be capped after every transaction. There's going to be a certain amount of Ethereum that's going to be burned and never returned back to the blockchain. So now ETH has a scarcity model mm. attached to it. Do you know what that does to Ethereum now? You know how many people are using DeFi? Every single DeFi project is loaded with ETH. Right. Facts, if, if, yeah. if you're gonna be if you're gonna be staking Ethereum, it takes 32 Ethereum just to even qualify to stake Ethereum, right? Yeah. If you've done any trades on Uniswap, you know good and well Uniswap moves moves more volume than Coinbase does right now. Yep. All of those transactions are gonna have fees attached to it with those burning with those burn mechanisms mechanisms built into it. Ethereum is gonna become very scarce and very valuable. And right now, I've been looking at the chart; it's mimicking the same price action Bitcoin had in 2017. Yeah, it's 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 huge facts. And I mean, you know, just to touch on that, and that's that's amazing insight. Just so you guys know, what what really makes crypto like so incredible is obviously blockchain that backs it up, the technology, you know, that that drives the accountability and the ledger, so to speak. And so, okay, that's great. That's that's what makes every coin relevant, right? Is is that blockchain technology but what drives price of anything is supply versus demand. And so what Kurt just said to you, I want you to, I want to emphasize this because you guys, like some people are like, oh, Bitcoin's too expensive. Or, Do you have Satoshi's, but whatever, okay. Like understanding that the fact that Ethereum was once unlimited and now will become scarce, guys, the, the, the supply will shrink and the demand will increase because of Ethereum's blockchain technology and the speed and the, and the accuracy and all that stuff. So th this is major, major, major. And I know for me personally, I've been I've been high on Ethereum since mm -hmm. I really got into crypto. Since uh, Coinbase put Ethereum on, I started buying. And I think I got into Ethereum in like the hundreds. Like I think maybe around 200 or maybe even less. I don't know. But regardless, I was in Ethereum early. And I had 146 Ethereum for like three years. Recently, I've pushed to 300. And I was even thinking last night when Doge was up around seven, I was like, I think I could get like 20 Ethereum with this, bro. I was like, I think I might trade this Doge. <laughs> but I, I, I think we're going to talk about Doge in a minute because I know yeah. that's what everybody yeah. wants to talk about. <laughs> that's what everybody wants to talk about. But yeah, Kurt, to your point, bro, I've been so high in Ethereum. I moved recently. Uh, when the Ripple news came out, I knew Ripple was going to be in a holding pattern for a while. Uh, Ripple has a bright future. We all know that. But I knew it was going to be stagnant. I moved a ton into Ethereum. I moved a ton of Litecoin into Ethereum. I'm so grateful, bro. Um, but but to touch on, on what you just said, guys, I, I talked about this the other day. And this is what Kurt's talking about. Like right now, if you look at Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is still bullish to this point, 100%. 
right, we, we have a small little retracement. I know this, this screen has a bunch of stuff on it. So when we zoom out, it looks a little con congested. But right now, if you look, Bitcoin, besides that push up today, right, we were creating like lower highs, right? So, okay, we're still, I mean, uh, yeah, we're, we're still good. Like we're good, but, but there's a little bit. Of, look at Ethereum. Look at the candle, look at the candles and the price action on Ethereum. It, it's almost completely opposite, right? Where Ethereum, you still have this, this upwards movement, right? Just to, it's I'm drawing holding. that line just to show you, yes. It's, it's showing that demand is strong right now. Strong, and we saw today, Kurt, I know about guys, if you're not on Swipecoin, you just go get it right now. Kurt called yes. out an Ethereum trade and it's been playing off these, off these prior support and resistance points beautifully. Like this is what you want because your entries are gonna be strong. Um, and it's just, look, it's just strong. It's strong. Even when it takes a, a bit of a pullback, it, it, it immediately recovers. And right now we're seeing it, look at where it is. Anything above like 1375, if it holds and it closes there, is uh, for me like we're, we're ready for all-time high anything above that is like one impulse away from you know 1500 and i think i mean kurt what do you what, what's your what's your short term what's your short term like next 30 60 thoughts on ethereum um i personally think that we could very realistically hit 2000 or so pretty fast because this is spontaneous combustion bro like we're ready to get to the point where this thing's gonna pop we haven't had a huge candle in a while and i feel like with ethereum that's coming but what do you think is like the 3060 and then what do you think is like you know maybe 6 to 12. all right so when when you're looking at the price action we're getting right now even on the hourly time frame right when you whenever you see the markets doing what they're doing now especially with the climate that we're in there's massive demand for this stuff, especially with, you know, the top 10 coins that are moving between Bitcoin, Ethereum, DOT, Chainlink, you know, Cardano. When you see these consolidation patterns right now, this is accumulation. That's just what that should translate to in your mind. When you see this, you should think big money is, is, is accumulating more and more and more. And then once we break, we finally crack that, you know, all time high and just run after 1400. We're going to get price discovery at that point. There's going to be a lot of, you know, shorts that are going to get liquidated at that point. That short squeeze is going to happen. And then boom, we're running to the upside, right? People are going to get just pushed higher and higher and higher. Price could absolutely hit 2K within a matter of days after we break 14, right? It's not going to take a long time. Now, you think about most people that in the cryptocurrency space, they started in 2017, right? When price like at around, you know, 19K, like the Beehive got kicked and the swarm was <laughs> on the way, right? So... With this being said, now we're seeing the institutions and the corporations come in with that same kind of thought process. They're looking at Bitcoin first. What's the next thing that got your attention after Bitcoin, right? Ethereum. There you go, right? And I think over time, they're gonna look at the tech. They're gonna see the use case. They're gonna realize that over 85% of all the projects in the cryptocurrency space have been birthed through Ethereum's blockchain. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna realize this is like the world computer here. Maybe we should get a little stake in this one real quick. So. I think over time we'll see more and more adoption flow in. But even with, like I said, the the improvement proposal that's dropping soon, DeFi's heating up again, right? If anybody knows about DeFi? That's just decentralized finance. You know, we can go dive deeper on that in yeah, another that's, session. We could but, get. You know what? We should do a, a DeFi like in maybe a couple weeks. Um, yeah. We need to do a deep dive because, to be honest, that's a rabbit hole. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go down, bro. So yeah, we'll get this. It's lit. It's lit. When you get into like liquidity providing and yield farming and all the different things you can do with it, like it, it makes you ask certain questions as well. So like you see what Ethereum is going to do with, you know, with staking. And if you're putting up 32 ETH for a good amount of time, you start weighing the options. Like, am I going to put this up or do I want to just use that 32 ETH to go into DeFi and still have the option to pull out when I'm ready without having those penalties. So it's, it's, a, it's a toss up. And I think a lot of times you got to be a little more strategic and tactical in how you want to move right now. Is there so many things to choose from? It's like it's like literally logging into IM's back office, and it's like spinning around in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. It's all this good stuff you want to try. So <laughs> you want to take your time to just figure out which one suits you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a moment of transparency, bro. The reason why <laughs> I haven't gone into it yet is because of that. I know I'm gonna be like. So when I was a little kid, I'd be like, "Yo, mom, can we please go to Toys R Us?" And I would want right. everything, bro. <laughs> 
everything. They're going to be like, only the girls, I'll be like, nah, next. But, but everything, bro, I want every video game, every. So that's why I haven't yet taken that step. But I think I'm ready, bro. Because it's like, yeah, it's like Willy Wonka, bro. You just want everything. <laughs> absolutely absolutely and i mean it's not a bad feeling because it's, it's an exciting time to be in crypto like i was on a clubhouse last night man we were like going crazy just talking about the space that we're in right now and being in this is like the first time in human history where you get to put your money in before the banks get to show up right this, this has never happened before never like you, you get to actually participate in an emerging asset class it's like being around when the stock market was first invented right and people are still poking this thing with a stick saying is it real is it real and i'm like you can't you can't ask for the window seat on a rocket. You just get on and strap in. Like we're we're gonna be moving at an accelerated rate once these corporations come in. I think right now anything below you know fifteen hundred for ETH is a steal. Anything below you know forty k for Bitcoin is a steal. Like we we did the math on a session on Wednesday when we were talking about after this this meeting that Michael Saylor is having, if one percent of all of the Fortune five hundred companies come in, if they put one percent of their balance sheet in. Bitcoin rises up forty thousand dollars. That instantly puts us around a 70 k to eighty k. That's one percent, right? If let's say every every Fortune five hundred company comes in and they put ten percent of their balance sheet into Bitcoin, that puts us at a four hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. And now here's the deal: after we cross over two hundred k a Bitcoin, the volatility now goes down. It becomes much more manageable. Right. It becomes much more attractive. Right. It's because all these people are holding. Because the people are holding it. They're invested now, Facts. right? We got companies that are looking at the economy saying, they're gonna keep printing money. This is gonna affect my bottom line. We may get a shutdown. Our business may be at stake. Let's get something that could potentially keep us afloat. Now you can think about gold and all of that, but last time I checked, you can't swap gold out for your goods and services on these websites, but you could potentially use Bitcoin if you wanted to. And now when you think about corporations coming in, what do corporations spend most of their money on, ladies and gentlemen? What's their, on, on, on their balance sheet, what do they spend most of their money on? advertisements they're gonna do the work for us they're gonna tell everybody bitcoin the newest hottest currency come in and buy your your frappuccino mocha with your crypto right we instantly win because the corporations show up the hedge funds didn't expect this to happen this fast nope. so now they're scrambling trying to hurry up and get in because the adoption went the other way around right the tail's wagging the dog so Ooh. Ooh. I'm telling people it's game time man the tail, Kurt. What you? What you? What? What Wheaties you you eat in the morning? Bro? <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Yo, you got hold on. This boy dropping real quotable shit uh, stuff on this on this call." Bro. <laughs> I got Jason lose his composure, y'all. Bro, you got, his composure. you got me going crazy. He said, "You can't ask for a window seat on a rocket." Come on, you can't. And you just strap in. <laughs> no, but you know what? You know what's so crazy? You know, I, I I saw there was an article maybe. I don't know, probably two, three months ago, I saw it. And it was just one exchange, one exchange. And, and they were talking about the, the hold rate. And they surveyed, I was like, you know, they surveyed their, their people, whatever. And I think it was like 80%, 80, 85% of the people in just that one exchange intended to hold for six months to a year, minimum, right? So you gotta think, and this is the truth, and this is one of the things that I've been trying to tell people is that you gotta understand more than anything that, yeah, okay, we got the scarcity component, that's that's cool. But at the same time, you also have a hodl component where people are not getting rid of these coins. And and like for example, my mentor, I just I just got a screenshot before, but he just shipped out um a hundred and forty three Bitcoin for real estate. For real estate. You gotta understand. Even if people are willing to let go of the coin, most likely those coins are not being liquidated, right? If somebody's willing to take out millions of dollars for a purchase right now, okay, not more I'm gonna do. I might take a little bit out at 40, a little bit, maybe, maybe, just to maybe catch a dip, get back in, but I'm talking about like 2%, you know, whatever. If people are willing to he said, Jason, too active. Yeah, I've been on 14 hours of calls for like eight days straight. <laughs> what? Caffeine in a dream. Oh, my God. My schedule has been crazy. Caffeine in a Bro, dream. Bro, there's this new invention. You got to try it out. It's called a nap. It's awesome. <laughs> You're going to love it. You got you to gotta Google article. Drop me an article. Right, right. <laughs> 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 
I'm tra- I'm gonna check it out. But yeah, I mean, listen, people are not getting letting go of this stuff, and I don't blame them. And here's the thing: if somebody does liquidate a good amount, you know, you guys will see maybe a big candle on Bitcoin. And we see it every day. You know, it, the the, the two to three thousand dollar candle is not obscure anymore with Bitcoin. It's not. But it, the, the two to the two to three thousand candle in the other direction isn't obscure either. And and you right. saw it right here. You know, you had a bunch of liquidity. You can see it right here. Right here, you can see a bunch of uncertainty, consolidation, consolidation led to this massive burst this morning. Like a big, I, I've been saying, but Bitcoin just, I don't see survival for very long below 30K. I just don't, I don't know how you feel, Kurt. I know some traders think we're going back to 22. I just don't know, bro. I just don't, I, I, I get it like a harmonic pattern or something might show you that. But even like, you know, Chris Terry was sharing some Fibonacci with me and I'm not the best at fibs. I know you are, but dude, exactly at the 50% retracement he showed me the other day, bang, yep. switch. Yep. Bang, uh, I mean, in, in historical data, it, it, it lines up. Like I was just talking about this on Wednesday session. I went back, I looked at the price action from the last few bull runs. And when Bitcoin goes into this cycle, cause you know, we're all in those, you know, those, those stages, we're in that stage now where that demand is just kicking in. And it's unlike 2017 and, you know, back in like, two, you know, 2013, this is very, I know everybody always says, oh, the bull run is different, this bull run is different. This one is actually very different. This is the first time we have this level of adoption and this level of demand coming in from this type of a crowd, right? 2017 was, was retail. That was mom and pop. That was auntie and grandma coming in buying Bitcoin for the holidays, right? This is, this is not that again. This is something very, very different. Like we literally watched Dogecoin pump $3 billion an hour last night. Like that's not mom and pop coming in, especially now. Like, and I get it. We got the Reddit groups. We got the, you know, we got the, the, the telegrams and the Twitter family and all of that doing this stuff, pumping up, you know, GameStop and the AMC. <laughs> I, I understand all of that, right? We got Elon Musk doing this thing. Elon's being Elon, but the, it's still the climate, right? When you got stuff like Grayscale, right? You got stuff like, you know, Michael Saylor with, uh, with uh, MicroStrategy, right? You got these companies like PayPal coming in. Cash app coming in, right? Like this is not normal. We didn't get none of this in 2017. So it's just, it's a very different climate. So when you see these pullbacks on a higher time frame, you say, oh, we're gonna come back down to 20K, we're gonna come back down to 15K. I'm like, listen, I don't know what world you see these big money like movers coming in. Like you look at Michael Saylor, he says, I'm never selling my Bitcoin. Never. never. You look at you, you look at Grayscale, they're like, we're never gonna dump our, our reserve. This this is a Bitcoin trust. We're gonna keep buying this stuff. Yeah, they're like, gimme, give gimme. Give I think the more people that sell, it's better for Michael and, and you know, Grayscale to they, gobble it and, up. And, and, and you just hit it on the head. They're, they want you to have fear. They want they, they don't want the little person participating. <laughs> yep. They know there's only 21 million of these. And you, you spoke to something earlier, Jason, you were saying that the value of this thing is going crazy. Like these people are coming in, spending a million dollars and still seeing a value at 30K, 40K to buy up a Bitcoin. Think about how Wall Street works, right? They don't care that it's 21 million. They want to turn this Bitcoin into 500 million through derivatives. Yeah. yeah. So now if you got a real Bitcoin. Yeah, forget it. It's done. I don't know what to do with my hands. The car drove really well. Uh, (laughs) Straight straight Ricky Bobby, this thing. Like you got to know, like they want your Bitcoin. They want your physical Bitcoin. Mark my words. There's going to be options in the future where they'll say, hey, if you park your Bitcoin here, we're going to give you. 30% 30% returns on a year because you parked your physical Bitcoin here and we use it to flip it over and over and we'll give you 30% because we're going to make a thousand percent off of it because everything else I hear is paper Bitcoin. We want the real digital asset. Facts. And that's why, mm, that that's exactly why I've been telling people, dude, okay, MetaTrader 4, yes. Exchange Trade, yes. But, 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 50 bucks. Take 10% of whatever weekly income you have, and go on Cash App. It's the most simple place to start for low budget. Just buy your Bitcoin, because you can physically own it. But you know what, Kurt, what happened, or on an exchange or Coinbase or whatever, but you know what's happening with people right now is people go on Robinhood, and they're buying Bitcoin, and they didn't know they got scammed. They didn't know they got got. And it's the same thing with <sighs> PayPal, and I'm gonna tell you, PayPal is genius, because what they did is a massive money grab. They went and said, yo, we got crypto. And they got people who don't really know crypto saying, yo, I believe you, PayPal. I believe you, Robinhood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy it here. 
And I now, oh guys, yo, I got five Bitcoin. I own it. Send it somewhere. And you can't. I went on PayPal. I saw buy, sell, no transfer. Next. Mm -hmm. Next. So it's, it's, it's the grab. 